Okay, we talked about hope in your ordinary life, hope in your conversations, hope in your prayer life, even hope in your holiday. And today, hope in your house. Now, it's just to sum it all up. That's where we are going. That's where we are heading. And if you've heard this now before, just say, God, help me that this will be the reality that I will live by. Amen. Because may we always be hungry for truth. Because even then I can hear the same verse. I can read John 3, 16 for the next hundred times and it will still speak to me. It will still be life. Because life speaks to you. You were called to be alive. Thief come to kill, steal and destroy. John 10, 10. Hey? But Jesus came so that you can have life and life in abundance. When last did life become boring? Because if you have life in Christ and life in abundance, it will not be boring. Then scripture will not be boring. Because there is life in scripture. There's life in the word. So when I get into the word and you, when sometimes you need to evaluate your own life, see how you react to the word of God. When you read it, when you hear it, when you sing it, when you listen to it. See how you react to the word and then you will know how much of eternal life are you living today. And in how much the world or your work or your relationship with whoever dictates what will be your life. What your mind, your soul would say, what will be your life. Oh, you can write that down if you want to. Is my soul defining my life? Is your soul telling you what is life all about? <clears throat> May it not be so. Because there's so much more. So much more. When God says he has a dream in his heart for you, that means it's about things that he still wants to reveal to you. And the dream, you, a dream in his heart, it wasn't a nightmare and then he created you. He didn't have a nightmare and then now you are here. He had an excellent dream. He was excited when he said, let us make Treya Mayer. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they were excited. Is it not Genesis 1? Let us, us, who? Who's us? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image. And they always excited about what they are doing. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit looked at one another and they said, John Dean. I don't know always exactly why, but <laughs> Heinrich, Marius, hello. And they looked at one another and they were excited when they said, Nicoline, are you with me? <clears throat> So my brother, my sister, hope for your life started in the Trinity. Hope for your life started with Father, Son, Holy Spirit being excited about you. Amen. And from that place you can live. From that place you can live. And that's why we said love is the foundation. Love is the foundation. Can you quickly go with me, please, to Romans 5.5. 5. Everybody say five five. So next time you think about a high five, um, get high on um, <clears throat> on Romans five verse five. Oh, don't quote me out of context, please. Mora is very fikira kurant. Okay. Verse three. Not so only. But we also glory in our sufferings because we know that our suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. Hope. But I thought we have hope already because Christ is our eternal hope. Yes, 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 yes. So please don't have any form of suffering without Christ. Because that can really be hell on earth. Suffering because of Doing a lot of rubbish and nonsense. No. But this suffering is, at the end of the day is coming against. When you come against. This suffering is not. 
I'm just going underneath all the rubbish that the enemy and the world throw on me and what people throw on me. It's not that suffering. It is coming against. The suffering, the, the thing of coming against. The guy can go to the gym with a certain attitude and say, I'm going to suffer today. The guy practicing in the jogging, in the swimming, in the, he can say, I'm going to suffer today. But there's something actually that he's coming against with his inspiration, with what he does. It's, he's coming against certain things. And if he would give himself with the right attitude, he will start to persevere in the tennis, in the cricket, or in the swimming, or in the running, or in the jumping, or whatever. Are you with me? So that thing of suffering starts with a place of hope. Hello? That guy with the swimming, he hope, he's hoping that he will go with it. Go with it. The guy going to the gym, he has a certain hope to get fit or etc. Okay. I, I, are you are with me? So the suffering without the hope is rubbish. But that hope starts with Christ as your hope. But now you start with Christ as your hope and you deal with the flesh. You deal because... You can walk in the spirit, you can walk in the flesh. The two will stand against one another. You've written that down. Suffering is standing against. I know you've written that down. By faith, I stand against what I see with sometimes. <clears throat> Please, guys, make these principles part of your life. Stand against. But you don't stand against without Christ. Without Christ, the hope of glory, the living hope in you... Don't go and stand against some stuff. It's going to be just a rubbish. It's just, you're going to, that thing going to run over you. But when you stand with Christ, against, because he is your inspiration, that you will get beyond even the pain of after the practice, you know? So in that suffering, there is a practicing. You can write that. They say, in suffering... I'm standing against, and I'm practicing. And out of the practice, when you start to practice more and more and more, that's where it says what? It produces perseverance. When you bring yourself, and you're standing against this wara wara thing that says, yeah, I know I'm supposed to read the word. I know I'm, oh, there's no time. When some of the guys tell me, there's no time, I just, <sighs> No, bless his soul. <laughs> it all de determines what is priority and how you prioritize. So I'm standing against this thing telling me I, don't, I didn't have the time to pray or to get into the Word. Now I'm standing against this thing of feeling condemned. I stand against this thing of it's a performance. I stand against this thing of it's just the law. I stand against the things because Granny said I must spend time with the word or the pastor or whoever. I'm standing against that because that now it's like a suffering to get beyond my flesh. It's a suffering to get beyond your flesh. But you know, when you stole, maybe, I don't know, 90% of all people stole cookies when they were very small. Okay, not you guys. You are the 10%. But, uh, hello. Certain things that you did when you were younger, when you stood against it and said, I'm not going to do this again. When you were set free, you know it's so much lighter. <sighs> it's not true. But when you had to stand against that thing of you still want to smoke, or you still want to do this, or you still want to do the alcohol, or you still want to do some of these stuff, it's a suffering to stand against. But if you persevere, it produces this hope. There's just more hope. Because I saw the breakthrough. I saw the breakthrough. I saw the breakthrough. As I persevere in the suffering of standing against that what is flesh. Standing against that what can destroy my life. Standing against the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that thing is going to bounce back. He's not stupid. Devil is not stupid in that sense. He will try all any way 
for any justifiable reason why you will not do certain things that actually God is asking you how to get into the word, how to get with brothers and sisters, how to worship him together. Hello? Where God wants to be honored in the context of family. When we are here, this is his desire, that the church will come together, that the families, that there's hopefully in Jesus' name, may we have more than a thousand churches all over the place right now today that will worship him in spirit and truth just in Bloemfontein in Jesus name may they 2,000 4,000 8,000 I remember a long time ago 25 years about 30 years ago standing on Abel Hill thinking about the stadiums and the places and how it will be too small one day you mark my words, my brother, my sister, prophetically, I say to you, the stadiums will be filled. Went through Europe and getting into the cathedrals and saying to the guys that were with us on outreaches, Israel, different places, saying these places will be too small. The problem will be where on earth will there be enough space for the people to worship the Lord? That's, I, I'm serious. When I walked, it wasn't like psyching myself up. That's what I believe God said to me prophetically. We're going to see that day. You're going to see that day. There's lucky enough space on this farm. Hey, yeah, man. Open theater. Yeah, they're from the copy of Honor to. And God's going to help us in Jesus' name. No. How on earth did I get now on this line? <laughs> let's, let's go back to Romans 5. Okay. No. In the suffering, standing against, perseverance, and it produces character. When you come with character, this character you can write down there, stature. Everybody say, character, stature. When I have the character of Christ with love, if love is established in me as part of my character, where I come in with character, fear must go. Because of my character, fear must go. Why? Perfect love drives out all fear. And if you walk in love, when you are just walking in the love that is established in your life and it's the character of Christ, where you come in, where the love comes in, the fear must go. Love, joy. Where the joy comes in, whose joy? God's joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I come into the place with character, strength is coming into the place. Because through my life, you will be able to motivate people to have hope. You bring hope to people when you are established in character. Are you with me? Love, joy, peace. When you come into the place, you can bring peace. Are you coming in peace? Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world I give, but peace I give unto you. When you open your mouth, when you act, when you are busy with you're bringing peace. You're bringing a calmness into a place. Is it not like when there's a lot of kids and there's a right type of father or leg uh, leader coming into that place and suddenly there's just a calmness because everybody know we are safe. That when you open your mouth, the peace of God is there and people just experience that safety with Christ. Is it not supposed to be like that? That is when they're suffering... With Christ, the hope of glory produces perseverance, produces character. Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. The world can come against you, but, but Christ is established in my heart. He is not the fullness of God just in my spirit, but in my soul, things became aligned. That through my soul, when I come into that place, hello, change will be there. Change will be there. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. When you find a man of character, people have hope. When you find a man with corruption, is it not even with higher profile people? That if they are corrupt, it's like hope. Where's your hope? Back, yes, my hope is in Christ. But as I walk and are established through these processes people just look at me in that way and and you just act and you speak and people find hope 
It's a hope that you can just give like, like this through what you do, through what you say. This is now very practical. It's that hope inside of you that's been opened up and it has a certain fruit in your life. It is in your walk. It's in your song. It's in your, what you say. It's in your relationship. It's in your projection. It's in your dreams. It's in your vision, in your strategies. It's there and people can taste it. They can take it. If they take some of your strategy, they're taking hope. They take your words, they take hope. They model your relationships. They take hope for relationships. That your marriage can give hope. That the way that you dream about things, the way that you speak about your love for God, brings them hope. Are you with me? Oh, my brother, my sister, we sit with the gold. And in a time of famine, and in a time of... Hello, famine, in a time of thirst... They ate from the wisdom of God through Joseph. They didn't eat, first of all, the, the food from Egypt. When Israel came to Egypt, where Joseph was sent ahead, in a very interesting ways, sent ahead. And he had to persevere against the flesh. And he had to persevere. He had to persevere. In his suffering, he had to persevere. So the character is produced in Joseph. Hello. So that in character, he can walk with hope. And his life brought hope to the whole nation of God. His father, his brothers, whoever he felt he can even slaughter them. Based on right and wrong. He brought hope. And through the hope, the door opened for the nation of God. In this season, in the time ahead. When the facts could say, where is the hope? Where will we find provision? Let's get back to the facts. We have no food. Jacob, Reuben, and Judah, and Benjamin, and all those brothers told their father, we're going to die here. We need to make a plan. And there will be seasons, my brother and my sister, where the churches in the nations could say that we're going to die. Where's the not... Where's the solution? May there be Joseph's with the wisdom of God that will give the people of God hope. And where the other nations and where the heathen will serve the purposes of God and will serve for the church to have the open door for provision. Like it happened. It's a prophetic model even for us today. Be part of the solution. Be the man not power for the hour. No, the man of wisdom. And that God's wisdom will open the door to give the people hope. You want your children to have hope? You want your grandchildren to have hope? Establish hope in such a way in your life. Amen. Amen. I hope we will have our, what you call that? The subtractors. What is that young son now? My brother? Um Ali. That you experience to take it out. Amen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And hope, and then verse 5, our high five. And hope, establishing you, does not put us to shame. You have hope and you will not stand ashamed. Why? Because everything will work out. No, 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 no. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Love is the foundation of hope. Like we said in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Three remains. Hope, faith, love. Love is the foundation. Why will you not stand ashamed in your hope? You can only stand ashamed in the hope that you have. If it happens that God is not love anymore and he doesn't love you anymore. It's impossible. God will not change. God is love and God will always love you. Therefore, there will always be hope available for you. He has the faith in you because he hope. He's hoping. He has a hope in you because he knows what he has placed in you. He knows your destiny. He knows the dream in his heart for your life. Therefore, there will always be hope because God himself is our living hope. Amen. Amen. Are you still with me? So your hope will not put you to shame because 
God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Will we take that? Let's say, Holy Spirit, please pour out the love of the Father in my heart. For your love, your hope will not shame me. Okay, you will not stand in shame. Even when you make a mistake, you will not stand in shame. Because through the grace of God, there's forgiveness. But you always, you fall back into the place of the one that is called hope. The master of the universe is called hope. You fall back into the place where the master of the universe is holding you. Hope embraces you. Hope will never leave you. Hope will never forsake you. Hope cannot be unfaithful, even if you are unfaithful. He, God will not be unfaithful. Amen. You will stand for eternity embraced by hope. But what will you do with that? Because you can be in that truth, but you decide, I will live from my soul with whatever my soul wants with the temptation through my body. God's going to help you. God's going to help me. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Okay. Great. <clears throat> 520. Everybody say 520. Okay, we're going to start with Ecclesiastes 5. Ecclesiastes. We basically actually talked about it yesterday. Wakreep Dieding weg. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 20. We talked about it that Mr. Solomon said, everything is meaningless, everything is meaningless. I have all the wisdom in the world, I have all the women in the world, I have all the riches in the world. And at the end of the day, after all the wisdom, after all the riches, after all the women, he says, everything is meaningless. Unless we come back to the simplicity. Everything meaningless means that in this whole book, Ecclesiastes, more than 10, 15 times he says, there's no hope in it. You can have no hope in all the wisdom. You can have no hope in all the women. You can have no hope <clears throat> in all the riches of the world. It will not satisfy you. It will not be able to be a foundation for you for your future. But then, he says, I've seen nothing better than a man that can be fulfilled, that can be content, that can enjoy his life with what God has given him. If it's few, if it's a lot. But in simplicity, that a man can enjoy his life with God. Amen? Now, Ecclesiastes 5 verse 20 says, They seldom reflect on the days of their lives. They don't have the issues every day. These guys that God, that God really blesses. It's not like they get into the issues in their lives and the issues with people and the issues of life and the issues in the future, the issue of financial stability and this and that and that. They don't have the issues and the opinions with people the whole time that they must work through. They seldom get into that. Why? Because God keeps them busy. Let's say, God wants to keep me busy. God keeps me occupied, this translation. God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart. God is keeping you occupied with gladness of heart. If you understand the simplicity, how, what is meaningless and what not. What is valuable in your life and what is not. If you understand that and allow God to speak to you about that, we are talking about hope. If you understand that, you will not find yourself with Christ in you, the hope. Eternal hope in a place of hopelessness, in a place of meaningless. This was meaningless. It was meaningless to do this and to do that and do that. And it had it was meaningless to get angry. It was meaningless to say that horrible things to that person. It was meaningless to keep a grudge. It was meaningless not to forgive. It was meaningless to feel sad. It was meaningless to become negative or depressed. It was really, really, really meaningless. Now I just put that also there. He's not about to be healed from this emotional hurt just. But the emotional hurt is actually meaningless. You not. You're very, 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 very valuable. Let's say I'm very, very, very valuable. 
And from that place of knowing I'm very, 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 very valuable, I can come and see what is meaningless in my life. Because otherwise, if I don't know I'm valuable with him, you're a good, good father, that's who you are, and I'm loved by you, that's who I am. That's who I am. I'm loved by the Father. And because of who, how amazing he is, and I'm the fruit of who he is, I'm the fruit of the one that is the most amazing in the whole universe, that's why I can be amazing. Tell yourself, I can be very amazing. Now say that with attitude. I can be very amazing. Okay, are you with me? Okay. God want to keep you occupied with gladness of heart. And the, the place of gladness of heart, first of all, is with Him. God has gladness of heart when you walk with Him. When you walk with Him. This gladness of heart, is it not the place where you are standing faithful? Where we talk just about standing against suffering so that we can come into the place of perseverance, so that come into the place of character, his character. And part of his character is joy. When you are faithful, God says, enter the joy that your master enjoys as a reward. You get a reward to have gladness of heart, a reward to understand how to enjoy what you have. Remember we talked about this in a series where it says God can come and he can give a man all the blessings. And it says there, all the desires of his heart. God can give that man all the desires of his heart. And not the ability to enjoy it. That's why that man with a billion dollars can commit suicide. That's why they, those guys with all the fame and all the wow and all their pictures are on the walls of the teenagers, all those, not all those, sorry, Lord. A lot of guys in Hollywood, a lot of guys, those guys, they made it, man. This, they have the followers. They have the wow around them. And for why will they go into the drugs and die with an overdose? I mean, you've made it. You have now all the dollars in the world. You have all the fame. From who? The guys where it counts the most with all the young people. You have it. You got everything. And then you go for the drugs and die of an overdose. Yeah. Nye, 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 nye. God wants to bless you with the desires of your heart, but He wants you to give the He wants to give you the ability how to enjoy it. And that ability is first of all. If you understand how to enjoy it with his gladness. How to enjoy it with him. Enter the joy that your master enjoy. Enter into the fulfillment tomorrow with what he has for you. Walk faithfully tomorrow. God wants to reward you to enjoy your life with him. With him. Not first of all in the thing that you did. But with him. That's God's destiny for you. But if I don't get into that place, then I'm standing in that place. I cannot enjoy my life and I call it suffering. The suffering and the sacrifices a Christian must make. Because I, understand, I didn't understand suffering. I didn't understand it. He's talking about coming against. Everybody do this, please. If you can do this, you won't do this with your neighbor or this even with yourself. But if you can come against your flesh so that you can come into perseverance, so that you can come into character with who you are, it's bouncing against darkness. With who you are, with stature, you are bouncing against darkness and the battle doesn't belong to you, the battle belongs to the one inside of you. Because in this, you are not fighting life, you're not fighting the issues, you're not fighting the storm. You speak to the storm in the name of Jesus Christ from a place of hope. Hope the boat that God has given you so that you can cross the place and get into your destiny what God has for you. You can have it. But then stand against that what is flesh. Because the enemy has nothing against you. Except when you give him the authority. 
and you don't fight the flesh. Because if you're walking in the flesh, he has legal right to come into your life more. He has legal right to have authority. And to destroy as far as he can. As far as you give him the right. But you give him the right. Remember the old example? The policeman, and he does this. Then you start to pray in tongues. No, 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 then it's too late. You pray in tongues. <laughs> now, yeah, you can maybe do that also, but uh, yeah, for whatever now. When he does this, he's standing against that 30 ton truck with a, quite a massive engine. What can he do against that thing? The truck can go over him without saying, bup, bup, bup. oh, what happened? The enemy and the circumstances can go over you and blah, blah, blah. no, whatever happened, but you're destroyed, you're gone. Are you with me? But the guy that is not stressing about the trucks, he only does this. Remember we did that? Everybody go. Niku, so that's the enemy in your life. When you stand against what you call suffering, and you do this, everybody do this. Try that. Now we go for it with what, what the enemy going to do. Do this. When you stand in the name of Jesus Christ with the authority God has given you, and you stand against that what wants to destroy your life, the enemy has one thing. And you take all the, the oomph and the strength of that major truck. He's gone. You're not fighting against the engine, but you stand with authority. And the engine will submit. Are you with me? Okay. Hallelujah. Where are we now? Oh, Lord have mercy. Are we at the first one? You can tell, you cannot tell the pastor, brr, brr, psh. <laughs> okay? You must tell the enemy that. Okay, thank you very much. The second one, it will be very quick. I'm talking now about the hope in you and that you will speak the hope. Let's say, I will speak the hope. So the first one, at the end of the day, through that, through the perseverance, through the character, your life speak the hope. You are speaking hope into the situations. That's 5.20. Where we will go to? Yeah. Ecclesiastes 5.20. Uh, Ephesians 5.20. What will you speak then when you have hope? Ephesians. Is it clear now? Wie is bezig om dit te lees? Ephesians 5.20. It says. Always. Everybody say always. Can you remember sentences that you said with that word in? You are always like this. This thing never works. It's always going in that direction. Well, well, uh, sorry. According to always uh, in the word, always giving thanks to God, the Father, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's say always, always. for everything. Okay, no, no, no. Let's try that again. Always, Always. for everything. Okay, so when you must give always thanks for everything. Give me the time slot for moaning. <laughs> no, no, I'm just sharing my heart. I'm just opening up. I'm not saying you mustn't be honest. You can be honest. You intended to harm me. Joseph said, you intended to harm me, but not without the truth. Facts, honesty, always with humility towards the truth. Let's say honesty, with humility, into the truth. I remember that sentence. You are, will be honest, but you, but you will not honor the honesty. You will not honor the facts. You will not honor the situation. That in the situation, immediately you bring with your mouth. You bring truth. You bring hope. You bring hope. So, honesty, you intended to harm me. So, I can take all hope away from you. All hope away from you. Throw you in jail because you sold me. And I went through hell because of you. 
So whatever hope you came with here to bring here to bring to take food to your father and whoever, that hope is gone. If I must be honest about this situation. But after honesty, I submit with humility into the truth and say, but you know God had a plan for a whole nation to have food in a time of famine. And with that place of what God, God's plan was, it brings hope to the brothers. And Joseph says, come here, my brothers. Oh, you can be so free. That man, Joseph, was free. He was a free man. And to see God's dream and to live God's dream. And he could be part of God's dream and part of to how to facilitate God's dream. You can facilitate God's dream into the nations. Uh, uh, can we cry about that? Or what must we do about that? Always giving thanks. Always giving thanks. Remember we said in Philippians 4 verse 6, be anxious of nothing. That's just a command. How can you just command me not to be anxious? When last did you speak to people and encourage them and, and minister to them? To get them out of anxiety. When last in that ministry did you just tell the person, stop being anxious? <clears throat> yeah, that's very simple. But God will not expect that if he doesn't give the solution. Be anxious of nothing, but bring everything from your heart in prayer, with supplication, with intensity, and thanksgiving. And the thing is, we bring all of that in prayer. You can be in, into prayer, man. You can pray eight hours a day, and you're into the prayer, into the prayer. But the bridge to a supernatural peace that will guard your heart and your mind, peace beyond all understanding. To get into that place, there's one word, with thanksgiving. With that ladder, you go over the cliff over into the place of a supernatural supernatural peace beyond all understanding that will guard your heart and when you go with that peace 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 the peace of god take me through because the final ladder crossing was thanksgiving i come into that place that's verse seven so that in verse nine i go with the peace of god so that in verse nine what becomes visible so that the God of peace will be met with you. It says, verse 7, the peace of God. And then verse 9, the God of peace. The peace of God, you work with the peace of God through prayer and thanksgiving. You start to thank God. Start to thank Him. No, but for this rubbish, I cannot thank Him for this rubbish. Why can you thank Him for the giant? Joshua and Caleb thanked Him because will you thank God for your food? Hopefully, when you eat. Uh, hopefully you don't do that as a religious thing. Or you don't do it because it was religion. No. Change it then. And make sure it's not religion. You thank God for everything. So when you thank God for your food. And Joshua and Caleb says the giants they are our food. That means you thank God for the giant. Uh, one plus one is two. Is not that not true? Then you thank God for the giant. Because... You're going to grow through the giant. You're going to see God's man power manifest. And you, it will be your food, the giant. So in your circumstance, you start to thank God. And the enemy sees he, he, he cannot go over you. You're not fighting him, first of all. He just started to give thanks. For what on earth is that man thanking God? It's not supposed to happen. He's supposed to stress and be anxious. He's supposed to go in a frantic situation to have crisis management. Now he's thanking God for that giant. He's thanking God. Why? Why, why, why? Because there's a hope in him. There's a hope in him. There's a hope in him. If you have hope in you, you can thank God for every situation. And you will not become miserable. Because God wants to keep you busy with gladness of heart. Amen. God's going to help us all. I believe I trust in Jesus' name. As you met me. I hope so. Giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Always. That was number two. Number three. Number three. We're going to number three. Is that true? <laughs> Ecclesiastes 5.20. Ephesians 5.20. The next one. 2 Corinthians 5.20. 
2 Corinthians 5.20. You know that one. We talked about that also. 2 Corinthians 5.20. Okay. 2 Corinthians 5.20. We're talking about how you speak up and you give yourself out there because of hope. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through you. We implore you on Christ's behalf. The other one is, we plead with you. The other translation. Be reconciled to God. I asked you two weeks ago, when last did you plead with somebody to be reconciled with God? When last did you plead with someone to be reconciled with God? Or are you not an ambassador of Christ? But just understand, there's not a neutral place of, I'm not an ambassador with Christ. I'm not there yet. You will be an ambassador. You will be an ambassador of compromise. You will be an ambassador of wara wara. You will be an ambassador of a fake child of God. Where you're a child of God, but you learn, you, you, people can see the fake in you. Sunday, you are this. Monday, you are something else. Sunday, you have this type of talk. Monday, you have that other type of talk that you will never say in church or <sighs> through your life, because you have hope, you can plead with somebody to do something. You are so serious because you, you know the answer. When you really understand hope, when you really understand hope, you will plead with people to get into their destiny, unless you are excited with their destruction. I, you cannot be. I don't believe you. So when you have hope, you have stature. Remember we said? Suffering, persevere, character. Character so that you can have ambassador. You present and people know you are in this world, you're not from this world. Let's say, I'm in this world, I'm not from this world. And people know you are in this world, what do you mean? It means you are real. He's a real person. He's real. He's not fake out there. He's not cloud pie in the sky. He's not... This, this airy fairy Christianity is really real. But in the realness, hello? It comes with a hope. It comes with a hope. Be real, ambassador. Be real, please. But if you know the ministry of reconciliation being entrusted to you according to 2 Corinthians 5. He didn't trust you, first of all, with the skills. How can you go, first of all, and take the skills that God has given you to have a job, to do the job that you have, to have your business? How can we be so arrogant and take that so that we can have money, but we will not take the other job? And that is to be an ambassador with, of Christ. He gave you that skills to have that job so that in that place you will be an ambassador for Christ. Not just to have a job. Not just to have finances at the end of the month. He gave you that job. He give, he's giving you that connections. Going into that place. The people walking into that shop. They're not going to buy something. But they are there for, the reason, for a specific reason. They are there for a reason. They're coming into the office of the ambassador of Christ. You're at the job. You're not the CEO. But people come into the office. And they start to speak to you. They're making jokes. But you're standing there. They're making jokes with the ambassador of Christ. Let's say they are making jokes with the ambassador of Christ. People comes. He's coming to me. Is it is or are? Oh, thank you. People are coming to me because I'm an ambassador of Christ. Bottom line. Don't waste your time anymore. It's not just to go and do this or go and do that. May you do what you do with excellence. Excellence, excellence and thanksgiving. But people come to you because you're an ambassador of Christ. And I hope you will not present your own selfish agenda. Because if you cannot present Christ, you present some or other selfish agenda. That's not condemnation, that's reality. God going to help us. Okay, that was number three. Then, Acts 5, 20. Acts 5.20. Acts 5, verse 20. 
okay, you're an ambassador of Christ, but then even the angels, if the angel would manifest to you, you'll come out and say, wow, an angel manifested. And he showed himself to me and he spoke to me. And that it was all about that. The fact that he ma- you saw that angel and he spoke to you. That's great. Is that your testimony? No. Your testimony is what? Go, the angel said. Go stand in the temple courts, he said. And tell the people all about this new life that you have. Verse 17. Then the high priest and all the, his associates were, who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. So your testimony is, oh, supernaturally I got out of jail. Supernaturally I got out of debt. Supernaturally I got out of this crisis. Wow, I have a testimony. No, that's not your testimony. You came out of that place even through an angel that manifested. So that what? So that you can go and stand there in public. How ridiculous. You're going to be arrested again. Hello? I'm just taking you here out, in, quietly out of jail. Shh, shh. Out of jail. So that you will stand here and tell everybody about the new life. That sounds not logical. Are you with me? But God wants to get you out of the jails. And he will send angels to get you out of your jail. To do what? To be out of the jail. No. So that you will tell the people about the life that is in you. will tell the people about the hope that you have. You better be at university and do the right thing in that sense. Amen. Amen. That was a quick one. Next one. That was number? Number four. Okay. Number five. James. James 5 verse 20. James 5 verse 20. Is it not here? That's the last verse in James. Remember this. Tell your neighbor, remember this. Except that it's lacquer hot here. Remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover a lot, uh, cover over a multitude of sins. A multitude of rubbish. A lot of rubbish in our lives can be turned away, can be dealt with. When we can accept people who will speak to me about the rubbish and get you to turn. You know, I turned from this rubbish because Peter spoke to me. You don't have the Peter Jones, obviously. No, what am I saying? Oh, blessed are you, men, if you have people speaking straight into your life. And that you don't whip yourself. What is that? Uh, take offense. That you don't take offense. That you don't take offense. That you don't justify yourself. That you just stand, I hear what you say, I will pray about it. And then you stand back out of the relationship. <laughs> no. Blessed are you if you have that type of people. That can get you even out of rubbish. Are you with me? Remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way. I'm not perfect in my ways. You're not perfect in your ways. Make sure you have people that can see in the spirit more. That are there to serve you, not to condemn you, not to be bossy over you. But in their leadership, in the accountability that you have towards that person. They're serving you to take you into greater accuracy, to prosper more according to God's word. Out of the error of their way, they will save them. Not just from hell, because you're already a child of God. You are saved. You're not going to hell. But you are saved from struggling in a lot of rubbish. And you're going to struggle less and less and less. You have to stand against less and less and less and less. It's life will not be just the whole time this, in this type of suffering. You will stand up. You will rise above if you allow those people. Amen. You have hope. There's hope for you, my brother, if you're accountable.
There's a hope if you have that type of people in your life. They can speak into your life and you have the temptation to get, take offense. When you have the temptation to take offense, you have good people in your life. If you don't have a temptation to take offense, nobody's dealing with your sin. It's just growing and brewing there in you. But you, if you have a, a temptation to take offense, the first guy, first guy of the Adam and Eve, hey? God has addressed the error in Cain. Abel and Cain. And God addressed the, the error. And he warned him. The sin is luring around the, the door. Sin is what? Lure, lure, luring. Something like that. Around the door. God wants to protect you. That brother wants to protect you and say, Pasop, don't go this way. Don't go this way. See God's heart that he wants to discipline you. He don't, doesn't want to nail you. He doesn't want to point the finger to you. Because sin is behind the door. You don't see it yet. That means you don't see it yet. When you don't see why you must change. Hallelujah. And this guy say, no. Don't do this. First generation. First generation after Adam and Eve. When that came in. That man took offense. And he went in jealousy and he killed his brother. The firstborn killed his brother. The firstborn with major promises from God. Okay, that was number? Five, number six. We are going for a landing. Okay. Oh, Lord have mercy. Where's that other one? Okay, hopefully I'll get the seventh one sometime. But let's then just take the six. Will you forgive me if I don't find the seventh one? You will not take offense, eh? Okay. So there we go with uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. We're talking about how you stand, you open your mouth, and you present and you share the hope. I was quite amazed when I said, oh, thank you, Lord, for this one. Deuteronomy 5, verse 20. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You will not be a false witness. False testimony. When you compromise, when you go this way and then that way, then in this situation you can do that, in that situation you can do that. You're a false testimony. You're supposed to be an ambassador of Christ. When you're an ambassador, and this ambassador of Ukraine sitting in this place and saying, no, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But it's not nearly the truth. And all the newspapers, they take it. They take it, and it's all over the world. False testimony. The impact of your false testimony can be great. You shall not, you shall not have a false testimony. And that's not going to court and lie. It's not just that. It's living the lie. It's saying one thing, but actually people look at you and say, that's fake, man. You're a fake. Yeah. Here you do that, there you do that. Oh, but God must have mercy on us because we will make mistakes. Come on. We're going to make mistakes, but praise God for the, for the blood of the Lamb so that we are supposed to give hope. And it didn't work right. I fall back into the arms of the living hope. It's going to, I'm going to take the hand of the living hope and I'm going to go through these processes more and more again. And I'm going to have breakthroughs more and more and more. More and more and more. I'm going to have just breakthroughs. Is it, is it right? Tell your neighbor I'm going to have a breakthrough. More and more. <laughs> I want quickly to give out, you guys to give out the three letters. Um, you fold in one on Friday evening while they're handing out. <clears throat> we spoke about how from your spirit you're supposed to speak to your soul when you have no hope. When your spirit, your reborn spirit, as a child of God, you're not a baboon. If you're not a baboon, you better speak from your spirit to your soul. Baboon, don't have spirit to speak to his soul. More stupid than a baboon is a man that has a spirit that can speak to his soul and he doesn't do it. The baboon cannot do it because he doesn't have a spirit. But a human being that has a spirit with the fullness of God in his spirit... 
and Holy Spirit testifying in his spirit. And he doesn't speak to his soul. That is more stupid than a baboon. But nobody of the turn of God, they are doing it anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. We all changed. Amen. Let's just say, I've changed. I've changed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Better believe that. <laughs> so, David said, Oh my soul, why are you so downcast? Your spirit does not understand how can your soul be downcast. Then he says, hope on God. Him you will praise. So your spirit must tune your soul. You cannot ignore your spirit. Your spirit must say, hey, how can you be downcast? God is in your life. Hello? Hope on him. Him you will praise. Okay. It was for Amo. Oh, you see, net twee wat uitdeel. Maar jylle gaan vorder. Nee. Moet ek ook sommer vir iemand die so gee. I have a hope that we will be quick in this. Alright, nee, daar kom er uit. Daar is ons drie sommer. Halleluja. You have a hope that we will finish now. I hope you, I hope, I hope, yes. I hope you have a pen. I hope you have a pen or a pot load. What is a pot load? What's good? Pencil. With you. Who needs one? You can just be honest and we can just borrow you one. Okay. Everybody ready? Now, now today, you are not going to it could not going to be from your spirit to your soul. That was the first letter. If you were not here, please, Friday evening, please can you write such a letter to yourself and get them into scriptures. There's a major lot of scriptures where you are telling your soul. We are singing songs. Maybe 20% of all songs we are singing to our soul. Um, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Who, who is saying that? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. That's my spirit telling my soul. My spirit is telling my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. What is your soul? Your intellect, your emotions, your will. Intellect, worship the Lord. Emotions, bless the Lord. Thought patterns, bless the Lord. Hurt, bless the Lord. You have so, so many, 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 many songs. Where you actually your spirit is telling your soul. When some, when sometimes when we sing like this, we're supposed to sing like this. <laughs> Not lifting our hands. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. It's like, you actually, you must look in the mirror. And you do this. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Soul? Bless the Lord. All that is within me. Hey, emotion. Hey, that thought that is wandering off now. Come back in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, you will. Worship his holy name. A lot of that in, in, in Psalms. Is David the warrior? He has a war against his soul. He is tuning his soul. Like we said yesterday, there's a lot of verses, and you have the psalm, and it's like all oh, these things that this man is going through. 25 verses, and then 26. But I will wait on the Lord. From him is my strength. And we said yesterday, wait. The other side of wait is hope. Because you have hope, that's why you can wait. If you have no hope, you will not wait. You, then, then we call it, you give up. You gave up. You have no hope. You gave up. But when you wait on the Lord, it's because you have hope. Amen. As we my car? I was not here. Okay. So what are you going to do? Yeah, we're not going to do it here. For the sake of time. Let, let's call it Wisdom. Because then you are going to have a nice, more fresh focus at home. When you have time with the word, you're before the Lord. Amen. Let's get out of this in this way. Okay. You can write there. From God 
or say my God, right there from my God, and then to who? Me. Me. Go and write down what do you believe is God saying to you. I'm not talking about you must change this, you must change this. I'm not talking about headquarters giving you the commands. I'm talking about your father sharing his heart with you as his daughter, as his son. Please, please, can you do that? The other one, you can write your name, where you have from. You write your name, it will be from. But it will be to who? You're going to ask the Holy Spirit. You're going to ask the Holy Spirit and please, then go and give it to that person. Pray and go and give it to that person. Hopefully there's somebody that will give me also one. But don't tune me. If you want to, okay. But uh, ask Holy Spirit, to whom must you give that? Because that paper must bring hope. Everybody say, it must bring hope. Go at least and bring hope to someone. Are you with me? May Holy Spirit guide you. May Holy Spirit guide you. Okay. And the last one. From right there, me. Not me, the pastor. It's you. You can write your name or whatever. And to who? Now, that who? You can ask the Holy Spirit also. And I want us there just to take a moment. And as far as I'm going to trust that the Holy Spirit will show you the name of the person, of the previous letter, and the name of a place. From Peter to Fijar Park High School, or Eofs, or Johannesburg, or Ukraine, or Russia, or the Democratic Party. Is it the Democratic Party? The Democrats in America. And then hear from God what you must say. Eh? And then you pray it out, what you believe God is saying to South Africa. You take it as your prophetic word that God has given you. Now, now hear me, please. Just focus on the last one. God will have something specific for you. That's what I believe, why we're doing this. God has something specific that he wants to put on your lips for Italy or for Ukraine. And he's going to give you on that paper, he's going to give you the prayer that you must pray for Ukraine. What you must give. So he's going to give you the words that must be on your lips. On nobody else's lips in that way. That you will pray. And maybe the word will be. Let's say it's Ukraine. Give grace. Give grace. Give grace. Forgive them. Forgive them. Hope put your trust in God. Hope in God. Hope in God. Get into the place of understanding your perspective. Your perspective from the Father. Hear the Father's heart. And you will not, you will not be misled. Because there's many. What do we do with the churches, my brother, my sister? Wow, we have a wonderful time here. Who's here out there sitting in the butter? <laughs> yeah. But uh, here we are as a church. And next week, a third is gone. Boom. And we just pray that God will help us in the war. Uh, God will help us with, not one of us has done anything against Russia. We are here in Ukraine as a church. I know Christians, I know a, a guy that came to Kriari for two years. Um, came to Kriari for two years from Ukraine. And here we are sitting, trusting God for protection for your friends and your family. And tomorrow a third of you are gone. How do you interpret God's protection? How do you interpret answered prayer? That guy, they, they have some giants. They have some things to stand against. But may God in his mercy bring us to the place to understand 
Where, where are you standing as an intercessor, as an ambassador in the spirit for God in Egypt, in Ukraine, or in Russia, where there's a lot of Russians, churches. I mean, you know, we got more than 10 Russian students for a year or two, or three or four, that came to Kriari. A lot of our leaders went there. Nikki went there for three years, Jolene for half a year, and Louise for, I don't know, two years. A lot of our guys went on teams to Russia. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of brothers directly, directly, directly connected. I mean, you know Ray, and you know Masha, and those guys. That's connected with you directly as a spiritual family. I hope as the brothers, you'll be there. But some of, some of them are so angry, and they must not judge their government. They must not judge their government. Where some of them are, you can he say they're hell, and even because they are not in hell, they are in fury. <laughs> In fury, but they must turn that. There's no time, there's no luxury to get angry. There's no luxury for those Christians to get angry or to get fed up or take offense or judge Putin or whoever. They must plead for God's mercy. Hello? <laughs> Amen. So, uh, yeah, amen. I hear where that church is. So some guys then went even uh, out on the streets. No, just just stand against stand against the wall. A lot of them being arrested, thrown in jail. But but how will the churches react? So I want us just to take a little bit of time. And if it's not because I said it, if it's Russia, then you write there Russia. And you're going to write a letter from God to Russia and you're going to pray out that letter. Because what you are writing down is what you believe God wants to say to the churches in Russia. But also through the churches to the nation. Amen. Amen. So you do that. That is for the place. And the other letter for the name of a person. Let's hear that from God. Holy Spirit, come please. Ah, Lord, and as we're ending this time together with you, this time together with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and your word, I pray, Holy Spirit, that right now you will speak into the spirit of every man, every woman in this place. God, you have a unique, unique calling for what they as ambassador, as an ambassador of Christ, what they must utter toward this place and towards that person. But you want to reveal your heart in a unique way through each of these men and women. Come and do that, Lord. Come and do that, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And that there will be no flesh in the name of Jesus. But that each one of us will know what you are saying right now. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Let's just take three, four minutes. And then we end off.
Thank you, Father. Oh, God, I pray that you will so in a special way guide every man, every woman, what they must write when they have their time with you. God, that what's, what's your heart, the words from your heart that you want them to give utterance to here on earth? To cover that man, to cover that woman? Lord, And also for that nation, for that town, from the, for that school, university, for that business. To cover them with your word. Thank you, my Lord, that you're going to guide them. That you're going to guide them in this in Jesus' name. So we pray. And all say, Amen.